Welcome back, everybody. Um, let us do an itty bitty little intro to literature critique, especially poetry. Um, we're covering the Northern Renaissance right now, and Shakespeare was part of that action. So while we're in the Northern Renaissance, uh, we might as well take our five minutes of Shakespeare because we can't just pass it up. Um, and look at some lit. We're doing art critiques every single week, and now let's see how we can transfer that observational, think about the context that you know along with what you're looking at, um, to say something clever. So let's get into Shakespeare here, little mini lecture. All right, um, so there, is quite a lot of work by Shakespeare. Um, we are not going to be reading any of the major histories, comedies, tragedies. Um, they are fun to get into. I would not have believed you until I was in grad school and ended up taking a Shakespeare in film class. That was so much fun. Um, so I think there's something in Shakespeare for everybody. So we're going to start small as opposed to tedious and painful, because I would like to give you a positive Shakespeare experience in a college class. Not that you haven't maybe had some before, but let's do another one. Um, we're going to look at sonnets for this unit. So a sonnet is a 14 line poem. He wrote many. Um, so it takes 14 lines. A book of sonnets is like a great bathroom reader. They go by quick. Um, they're punchy, they're snappy, and they're done real fast. You can do your critique on it after you've read it for 30 seconds. So um, a few things that we need to know about Shakespeare before we look at our sonnet. Um, P.S. I, I know some people go by the numbering system, but just for ease, which is also the most accepted way, is whatever the first line of the poem is, that's the title for the sonnet, okay? So we're going to be looking at My Mistress's Eyes Are Nothing Like the Sun, which is the first line of the sonnet. Um, all right, so some key terms we need to be able to talk about sonnets. Uh, well, the one that we're looking at in particular right now, and many, many of them are, is a blazon. So a blazon was a term for a poem that describes a woman's beauty using metaphors and similes. Um, I think you're very familiar with this, uh, you know, lips like a red, red rose and, you know, eyes like the sea after a storm. Um, those are, I don't know, that one's from Princess Bride. But, um, a blazon is a very sort of common form of romantic poetry during this period. Um, they've become sort of cliche by, you know, 500 years later, valid. Um, but you're very used to this idea of comparing a beautiful woman to some beautiful thing as a simile or a metaphor. Um, all right. So a sonnet, let's look at this 14 lines. Um, how they go is three, the structure is three quatrains and like quat, train qu qu quarter that that means four lines okay so you can see here a b a b so lines one and three rhyme lines two and four rhyme at the end of the line and then you got your second quatrain they rhyme independently you got your third quatrain they rhyme independently one three two four um and then the finale those so you got four eight twelve in the three quatrains and then the finale is one couplet. And a couplet, just like a couple, is two. So it's two lines. So lines 13 and 14. Um, GG. Uh, they rhyme boom, boom, right next to each other. Um, or at least have some sort of rhyming scheme. So um, a turn is the last terminology piece that I think you need to understand to move on to the next slide. Um, it's where the quatrains are building up to an idea and then it sort of takes a little twist at the end. I mean, I guess twist and turn, a plot twist. Um, you kind of get new meaning from what the couplet adds to the poem. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a plot twist. It's also like the punchline of a joke, but we're not telling jokes, if that makes sense. Like, you know, those really long form jokes. I had an uncle who was so into telling like five minute story jokes for the one punchline at the end. And you're like, hey, my God. so you're listening, but like you're aware that he's telling a joke. So you're like listening and you're kind of waiting for what we're building towards. Right. Um, so that's kind of how you read a sonnet. You look at the quatrains and you're like, OK, we got this thing going on in quatrain one. We're adding to that and developing that through two and three, but you're like, wait for it because there's going to be some sort of turn in those last two lines that kind of like add a second meaning or twist the meaning in a particular way. Um, so that's the fun of reading sonnets is that you're sort of building one thing through the quatrains and then you get this turn in the final couplet. So let us just check out this one that I think is <laughs> just fabulous. Um, all right, so we start with our first quatrain. Let's look at what's going on here. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Oops, that's supposed to be like, not line. Uh, coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. Um, this is sounding like an insult, right? Like, be like, man, yeah, no, she, that, she, <laughs> she snowy white breasts? No, hers are kind of like leather saddlebags, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's very almost insulting. Um, as you can see, the blazon where you're like, oh, beautiful woman, beautiful things. Like her lips are like coral from the sea. Um, he's making fun of blazons here, right? Like by his point, he's already sort of commenting on how cliche the like standard of like coral and roses and snow um, that we've got going on. Like we got the same three things that all women are. They're roses, they're coral, they're snow. <laughs> Uh, their eyes sparkle like sapphires, yada, yada. Um, so he's, he's making fun of Blaisons more than he's sort of, uh, I guess, making fun of the woman in this particular first quatrain. But at the same time, if someone's like, baby, baby, let me read you a love poem, uh, this is kind of a rough start. All right, let's look at the second quatrain. Uh, I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses I see in her cheeks. And in some perfumes, there is more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. Uh, all right, so second quatrain, we've got this eye reflection on what he sees first person. Kind of go with like roses and perfume in lines one and three. And then we've got, you know, reeking. Um, if somebody says that your breath reeks, that's not... That's not good. Um, so it's starting to get kind of uh, insulting. I think I'd be starting to get a little bit pissed off or annoyed uh, by now if I was sitting there being read beautiful poetry. Um, so you're getting a reaction. Like he's going extreme here. All right. So third, let's move on to um, what he's got to say in round three here. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. Um, so he's moving to how he loves her mis his mistress, uh, despite her poetic shortcomings, um, which is kind of a little setup for the quatrain. Or I'm sorry, the final couplet, turn. Uh, all right, so... And yet by heaven, I think my love is rare as any she belied with false compare. So he is turning the whole idea of a blazon on its head. Um, I think that's like the best sick burn um, in Northern Renaissance poetry, but <laughs> let's, let's unpack that so you can see why you should agree with me. Um, that final couplet, he loves her because, she, and he sees her as a real woman. He's not like, oh my gosh, she floats and her poop doesn't stink. And, and she's like a goddess who just like was born from the angels. Like, 
the first time she gets sick and you're like, ew, snot. I guess she's not a goddess. Like, off you go then, right? He sees her for what she really is. She is not um, roses and a goddess and mm. Snow White. She's, um, she is what she is. <laughs> um, and he loves her exactly for who she is. And he's not blinded with rose-tinted glasses on the fact that she is a human with flaws. Um so he's not living in a fantasy. He doesn't, he sees her exactly how she is and that is who he loves. Um, so he's calling all other poems that are blazons insincere with this final couplet. So um, it's just, you know, lies and someone not even seeing you. Um, it's a satire of all other blazons just like we see in these first three quatrains, like it's like a blazon, but it's like an anti blazon because we're saying how much she isn't all those things and making fun of it. And then the final couplet criticizes all blazons for being insincere. So he's made them all seem weaker than this poem. So he's given you sort of this no viable alternative uh, conclusion here. Um, where he's saying, you know, all blazons are insincere lies and that person isn't really seeing you for who you are and they don't really love you. Um, so he's just now like slammed, like WWE Smackdown, hundreds if not thousands of love poems that other people had written saying like, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you even want to hear anything that means anything... Step right over here, ladies. Um, so um, it's an incredible, like, argumentative strategy love poem that trashes an entire genre of very popular romantic poetry during this time, uh, making his the best one. So um, it starts out like a horrible insult. It turns out to be like the most genuinely romantic poem uh, of the genre, because it's kind of the, the anti blazon. So, um, I hope that helps with your critique assignment this week. Um, just look at them, sort of take each quatrain as a chunk. What's going on there? How are we building off the last one? What's happening new? Um, and then what does that couplet do to the end? Um, if you look through your checklist of things to look for in poetry, um, you'll see things like the rhyming scheme, the rhythm of the speech. You gotta say poetry out loud. You can't just read it. Um, so you're gonna miss stuff with like the did it, did it, did it, um, excuse me, rhythm. So, um, be sure to read it out loud to yourself. I mean, if you have to go sit in a parked car because your roommates will make fun of you, then tell them to like get jobs or try harder at school or something. Um, but say, say the poem out loud, um, one quatrain at a time, listen for the rhyming scheme, listen for the rhythm, um, and then think about the content sort of one at a time. What are we building towards? And then what are we turning with that final couplet? So, um, enjoy your sonnets. Let me know which ones are your favorites. Maybe read through four or five. They take 30 seconds each. Figure out the one that you kind of want to talk about, and uh, I look forward to your critiques.